Hey, it's Matt Haynes, and I've got some packages to open today. Now, some people might say I have gone a little microphone crazy, and <laughs> that might be the case, but I have not one, but three different wireless microphone kits here. And I am going to do a microphone shootout with them. So I'm gonna compare them, and we've got different price ranges too. We've got um, on the low end here, we've got the Mauno, Mayono, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, we've got the uh, mid-range Boya. Oh, Boya. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I kept telling myself not to make that, that pun. And then I've got on the high end here, I've got a road uh, go to as well. So uh, let's, uh, let's, let's get into these. Before I open these, they, they all come with one receiver, one transmitter, and the transmitters all have a built-in microphone, and then they also come with a separate lavalier mic. But when I open the Rode package, this is the high end, um, it had a separate lavalier microphone just thrown in the box, and it's from a different company. The company is, is Polson. I find it kind of odd that they didn't have their own lavalier microphone or didn't rebrand someone else's. Okay, but first, I'm gonna open the Mayo No. All right, and inside the package here, we have two petite-sized devices. We have a USB-C cable, dead cat. Actually, there's two of them. So we have a TRS cable and we've got a TRRS cable. So this one is for plugging into your camera. This one is for plugging into your phone. And then we have a lavalier mic and then a little carrying case. Okay, next up, uh, we're gonna open the Boya. Unlike the, um, the, the Rode and the Malno, these are rectangular instead of square. Ooh, stickers, that's worth the extra money right there. We have the actual units again. This is the actual lavalier mic right here. We have a USB-C cable. Okay, we have a, again, a TR, TRRS cable for phones and a regular TRS for plugging into cameras. And then we have a pouch. It's more of a bag, but it is branded. The Boya has uh, RX and TX on the unit. So transmit is TX and RX is uh, receiver, of course. I almost forgot there's a dead cat as well. Only one of them. Okay, last up, um, we've got the road, and um, I'll open the lavalier mic first. Uh, it comes with a pop filter, which I can now not get back on the microphone. All right, let's open the, uh, the road uh, wireless go to box as well. All right, so we've got a box with something in it. Oh, col color coding, interesting. So this is a uh, TRS, and then we've got a USB-C. We've got two of them. Documentation, you know I love these. Not to eat, of course. Now this is classy. They, <laughs> they have their, brand, their own branded silica gel. A little case, and we've got the, the two units here, and two dead cats. Now that I've unboxed all of these, it's time that I uh, start getting them out into the field and uh, testing them out. You're listening to the Malno units now and I'm taking them out for a test spin. These are the simplest and cheapest of the three I'm testing and uh, they're square shaped. They look like they maybe take their inspiration from the Rode Go units and uh, they even use the exact same case with a little different branding tag on it. All of the wireless units have a combination clip and cold shoe attachment. The clip is self-explanatory. It clips to a belt or whatever. And the, uh, the clip though, the width of it is the width of uh, a cold shoe attachment that would fit in your flash on your camera. Also, all of these wireless units, their transmitters, I'm sorry, their receivers um, are probably gonna stick out from the back of your camera. So if you have a viewfinder on your camera, like you're using a mirrorless, SLR or even a DSLR, you're not gonna be able to use the viewfinder very well because you can't get your face right up to the, the viewfinder. It's gonna poke you in the eye with the uh, receiver. All of these wireless microphones come with a dead cat and the Malno comes with two dead cats in case you lose one. And it was a little fiddly to get on. Once it's on though, it's not a big deal. So you get that dead cat on. By the way, if you're doing any recording outside at all, always bring a dead cat. Any little wind, any little wind ruins the recording. And if your audio sucks, throw your video away. All of these units use 2.4 Gigapoodle technology, uh, so you have to pair them. 
the uh, pairing on the Malno, it was pretty straightforward. Took me a moment because, you know, real smart that you have to actually hold the plus and minus buttons down for like two seconds and that's what triggers the pairing. But it remembers the pairing afterwards. The Malno units have one volume or level control and that's on the receiver end, the part that you mount on the camera, which I don't know, I guess I was surprised at. I thought, you know, if your sound source is louder or quieter, you're gonna wanna adjust it on the transmitter because if it's too loud and then you overload it and then you convert that signal to digital, transmit it to the receiver, well, any distortion is built in at that point. So I would have thought the adjustment would have been on the transmitter, but it's on the receiver. You've got six volume steps on the Malino, and I just have this at six, full volume. And then I've dialed back the uh, Sony's uh, inputs to uh, offset that. All of these units, at least the way I purchased them, came with a lavalier microphone. I'm not bringing the labs out into the field though, because none of them came with their own dead cats. The dead cats are only for the transmitter box, not for the separate lavalier mic. If I brought those lavalier mics out in the open, the wind would make it sound awful and you'd be like, ah, oh, I don't want any of these microphones. Now I'm testing the Boya wireless microphones. I've got them out in the field here. And uh, I gotta say right away, they have a OLED display. The, the Malnos had nothing. They just had, not nothing. They had uh, a couple of LED lights to tell you all the information. Um, so th this is an upgrade in that you're getting some visual feedback. However, the, the LED lights are really hard to see in daylight. I mean, it's it's really, really tough. I, I can't express how, how difficult it was to set these up, just in terms of being able to see the tiny numbers and uh, the, just the dim display. I had to find some shade to set the levels and things like that. Also the level settings. I don't know if this is a blessing or a curse, but there is, um, there's a level control on the transmitter, which is, you know, what I was talking about in the Malno uh, commentary. I would have thought it would have been on the transmitter. There's also a level control on the receiver. So you have two level controls. And then, of course, you have the one for your camera. Most cameras have level controls. So that's three level controls you have to fuss with to get right. Now, having messed with the level control on the, uh, the Boya, I can see some benefits to just having it on the receiver. I know I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. If you have the unit on your chest, you can't really get a, get a level check because you can't see the levels because it's in position, right? Only a YouTuber would come to a fork in a road or a trail and look in both directions and say, which way should I go? And then make that decision based on how well you looked with the light. So Boya didn't copy the road shape. They're uh, longer rectangular units. Uh, sets them apart. I will say though that if you were hoping to look through the viewfinder of your camera this is this Boya unit is going to make it harder than even the other ones but really they all take up that space. You're not going to be using your viewfinder you're going to be using the screen on the back or something else. Also these units came pre-paired. I didn't not prepared pre-paired. They were already paired together so I didn't have to uh, take five seconds out of my valuable time left on this planet to pair them. And of course it remembers it when you turn them off and turn them back on. Oh, this is steep. <laughs> you can connect two transmitters to one receiver. So if you're interviewing or uh, just, you know, working with somebody else, you can have them both go into the same recording. And this is a nice feature. You can select mono or stereo. What that means is you can either have the receiver combine both the signals and just put them on uh, both tracks of the video, or you can have it split so that one person is on the left channel and one person on, is on the right channel, and then you can balance them out and EQ them and do different things to each channel separately later. That's handy. I like that. One nice thing about the transmitters on the Boya, oh, there's a lizard. Wow, that's a big lizard. One thing about the transmitter of the Boya is that you have, you know, the microphone input for lavaliers, of course, and it comes with a lavalier, but you can also use it as a line input. So if you have like the output of something that is louder than a microphone, like, um, I don't know, the output of a mixing board or, or something like that, some stronger signal, you can flip a setting and you can still use that and then transmit it wirelessly. So that's, that's probably useful. Now we're looking at the, or not look, well, we're looking and listening to the Rode Go 2. I am at the uh, high point of this hike and I'm also at the high point of the price point. You get 
onboard recording in the transmitter, the part you're wearing. Uh, so if something goes horribly wrong... Okay, I gotta stop things right there because something went horribly, horribly wrong with the first Rode microphone test. So I had to go back out. Well, that Rode Go 2 test didn't go the way I'd hoped. Uh, some mysterious grungy distortion in the audio. So now I've got to come out and redo the test, or rather I'm going to do the redo the road test. But what, what I'm concerned about, see this could either be a recurring predictable problem or a random problem, and random problems are the worst because you can't allow for them. And if your audio is important and you can't count on things, then that's a problem. So my hope is I'm going to redo the general road field test in this location. And then I'm gonna take all three of the microphone sets out to where I tested the road originally. The only thing I can think of is that there's some power lines out there and I was underneath them. Maybe there's some radio frequency interference. It's a six mile hike though. So here I am two days later doing the same hike just for science or YouTube. The Rode Wireless Go 2 feels a little bit heavier than the other two units, a little bit more substantial. It's not so heavy that I think it would be a problem. Uh, you want these things to be as light as possible, of course. It's, it's a couple of grams more, something like that. Uh, the Dead Cat uh, secures very nicely, the best of the three. It twists on and off, and it feels very secure that way, which I like. And also the meters, oh my goodness, full color. Well, it's not a TV, it's uh, multicolored meters on the receiver. Pretty easy to read even in bright sunlight. They definitely did a good job there. A couple of nitpicks with the Rode Wireless Go 2. The units came completely uncharged. There was zero charge on them, which uh, the other units all had a little bit of charge, so you could have used them right away. It's a one-time thing, right? Also, the audio cable that came with them, it's kind of short. The Rode cord barely manages to make it. Didn't have that problem with the, with the other two brands. So the Rode, just like the Boya, has the opportunity to use two transmitters. And you also have the choice on both of those brands to either combine both signals into the same signal, or you can have them split left and right. If you have them split left and right, then you can adjust the volumes differently. You can EQ them differently when you get back into post. So for the higher price point, you get more for your money, of course. Uh, you get seven hours of uh, usage time. You get recording time on the transmitter unit as a backup. It'll record up to 40 hours of, uh, of uh, audio. Audio, which, you know, for professional use, that could be really handy. <laughs> like, for example, if you get distortion in your recording. You can also set the road up so that you have a safety channel. And a safety channel is basically a second audio channel that with the volume usually less. That way, when you set your levels, if it turns out you have this big spike that ruins your audio for a moment, you could actually use the safety channel, which has been recorded at a lower level. I hiked all the way back up to those power lines and I didn't get any distortion in the road units and I didn't get any distortion in any of the other units. And I'm not gonna say I'm relieved by that because now I don't know what was causing the problem. So I contacted Road and, and told them about the problem and asked if you know maybe they had a solution or they knew what was causing it. And all I got back was a robo reply via email. Yeah. While I was up filming at the power lines, the autofocus on my Sony ZV-1 failed permanently. All the footage was ruined from then on out, but fortunately the audio was still good, so I was able to confirm that the wireless microphone systems were working. You know, maybe there are mysterious forces working in that area. I mean, think about it. I went up there twice to record videos, and twice I come back with technical problems. It's almost as if someone or something doesn't want me up there. So testing these units in the field was really important so that I could get a sense of how they work. But setting the levels can be a little tricky when you're dealing with, you know, bright sunshine and things like that. So this is where we get to hear the actual sound quality of the different microphones. And I'm also gonna let you hear the lavaliers as well. So you can get a complete sense of how these things sound. Cause ultimately, a microphone needs to sound good, otherwise what good is it? So right now we are listening to the Maunos, and this is the Mauno transmitter unit only. There's no lavalier plugged into it. It's just uh, using the, the microphone in the transmitter itself. So this is how it sounds. This is the Mauno transmitter. All right, now we're listening to the Mauno lavalier mic. This is the lavalier that came with the package. It's plugged into the transmitter, but we're not using the microphone in the transmitter. We're hearing the lavalier microphone. So again, this is the Mauno system with its included lavalier microphone. 
Hey, now you're listening to the Boya microphone, the wireless transmitter microphone only. There's no lavalier hooked up and uh, the levels are balanced pretty carefully so you can get a sense of how it sounds. And again, this is the Boya transmitter microphone. Now you're listening to the Boya system, but this time I have the included lavalier plugged in instead. So it's the microphone right here. It's not this unit right here. And uh, this is a um, just getting a sense of the levels. The levels seem to be very similar when I plugged it in. I didn't have to make any adjustments. So that's, uh, I like the consistency. So you're listening to the Rode transmitter now, and this is just the microphone built into the transmitter, no lavalier plugged in. And uh, again, I've balanced the levels so that I'm not overloading my camera's inputs and uh, just trying to get a great sense of the, uh, uh, the quality of each microphone. So again, this is the Rode transmitter with the built-in microphone in the transmitter. Okay, you are listening to the Rode system, but this time you're listening to the lavalier that came in the package. Again, that third-party lavalier, and uh, it's plugged into the transmitter, so it's not the microphone in the transmitter. It is the lavalier attached to me. Unlike the other two systems, I had to do some level adjustments with this lavalier. It seems a little less sensitive than the built-in microphone. Uh, I don't think that's a big deal because there was still plenty of room on the volume control on the road system to handle it. So uh, I think it really comes down to just a question of how does it sound? And again, this is the road system with the included lavalier mic. So I've got some affiliate links in the video notes for all of these different microphone systems. If you want to check any of them out, please use my links. It really helps me out. And nobody's paying me to do this. Nobody's giving me free stuff. So any help you can provide. I've always had the philosophy that if I could spend 50% of the price and get 80% of the value, it's at least worth checking out. So the Mauno units, I was kind of hoping they'd be like this undiscovered gem. For most uses, this range is completely adequate. I mean, how often do you shoot someone who's 50 meters away? You can't even see their mouth moving from that distance. So I think for most people who are using wireless microphone systems, their subject is relatively close to the camera and they're also facing the camera. What kills the Mauno set for me is is, is it's the audio quality. I tried them on different cameras. I tried different volume settings and other settings. And there's this persistent crunchy distortion that kind of appears at the beginnings of the phrases when I speak. This might be due to the automatic volume control, some sort of limiting built in, I don't know. Um, but I noticed it both on the built in mic and also the lavalier mic. So it's something to do with the system itself. And it really bugs me. If you want to use wireless microphones for like a business presentation, something like that, these are possibly good enough, but for video production, the audio quality is just not there. And I was really rooting for the underdog a little bit, so this makes me sad. The Boya and the Rode systems, they both sound pretty good to me. I mean, they're not studio microphone quality, but I think they're pretty good. They do have a different sound from each other though, so I, you know, I'm having trouble deciding which one I like better. I know if I had to pick one, either one, and I used it for a couple of weeks, I'd be totally happy with it. The really dim LEDs on the Boya system, they drive me nuts. I was actually swearing at these units in the field. The LEDs are the only visual feedback you have, so you have to be able to see them. For some people, this might not be a problem. If you use the same microphone setup each time, don't need to change the settings, then maybe it's no big deal. If you're using these indoors mode, most of the time and you can see the LEDs, maybe not a problem. But if you're doing like a two microphone setup, you're doing interviews, something like that, running and gunning with your microphones, I'm not sure if this is workable. The external lavalier microphones that were included with uh, Mauno and Boya, I, they, they sounded pretty respectable. And of course you can always upgrade your lavalier microphone if you don't like the sound of it. Rode though, come on people, that third party lavalier mic you included from Polson, it sounded awful. I mean, it had no low end, but that's kind of normal for lavalier mics, but it had no high end either. If my advice to you is that if you're going to get the Rode system, if you can avoid paying extra for that lavalier mic, don't pay for it. Find a better lavalier mic somewhere else. The actual Rode system though, it's pretty flawless except when it fails completely. I never did find out what caused that distortion. And so I have to ask myself, is that gonna happen again? Now, I have the transmitter set up so that it will record audio as a backup in case something fails, but what a pain. I'd have to transfer the audio. I'd have to sync it up with the video. And you know, I'd rather not have to do that. 
I guess you really do get what you pay for. I mean, having that backup fail-safe option in the road transmitter could be a real lifesaver in a professional situation. And having that 200 plus meter range, you know, that's gonna reduce the likelihood of problems occurring in the first place. But you know, the Boya is no slacker either in the range department. So it really comes down to, you gotta ask yourself, how much is $70 worth to you? The Boya system is definitely a consideration, especially if your reliability needs are maybe a little bit more relaxed. You know, all three of these mic systems had pretty impressive ranges. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to stress test them and see how far they could actually go. And I documented all of that in this video right here. So come watch and you can see how I try and break the spirit of these wireless microphones.